something bad to us. We are going to do things to you that have never been done before. That'll work better if I turn myself on. Hello, folks. How are you? Not a lot of light. Uh, well, it's as good as it's going to get. How are you? Hope you're uh, doing all right. We're in for a bit of an early show, and it won't be a terribly long one tonight. Uh, I've got about an hour before I... Oh, hang on. What time is it? Five o'clock there. Oh, that one's fast. Uh, so I've got about an hour. So uh, there you go. We'll see how good we can fill it in. I'm probably going to need a few questions and answers from you. Uh, hello, Paul. Good to have you in. And Peg, you guys are in uh, quick tonight. Uh, we're only going out tonight on um, the None 2K channel and uh, I think the Rumble channel. Uh, I was running a bit late. I haven't set up the Cairns News channel or uh, the Unity Hub. I don't think that's uh, streaming there either. Or, uh, might be. And Project Matilda isn't up tonight. So uh, I will fix all that before uh, we get together again. But um, uh, we have arrived at Lake Oberon Estate. Got here last night and or yesterday afternoon. And uh, spent a lovely night. If you saw uh, the little live I did yesterday, I showed you the rooms around here. Uh, and I've got to tell you, the air conditioner slash heater works extremely well. And uh, whew, it's now a bit hot. So I'll back her off a bit. Uh, I've uh, had a day today where we had to do a few repairs on the bus. So uh, for those of you following along, uh, had a, a fuse issue. Uh, I lost all the lights on the drive down. Uh, main lights at least, headlights and uh, low and high beam, made it very difficult to uh, see where I was going. So got to spend the night on the side of a very dark road just off the highway, a little place called Kew, south of uh, Port Macquarie. Uh, when the sun came up, light wasn't a problem, off I went and uh, managed to get to Oberon. Well, the drive over the hill, uh, the Blue Mountains, hell of a hill, uh, that was a bit exciting in the old girl, I've got to tell you. She performed amicably, and uh, I'm very impressed, not so much with the fuel mileage that I'm getting at the moment dragging this trailer and, and coming up over the Blue Mountains, but uh, that will even out uh, across the course of the trip. Uh, we've just struck a lot of mountains to begin with, and, uh, and it's just a slow old grind. Um, Sunday, the plan on Sunday was for... Uh, Voice of Freedom, to stream the launch of the Heart Party, uh, which is coming out of an address in Sydney. And uh, I desperately wanted to be there because I was uh, going to be able not only to stream their party launch, then change from IMOP to Heart Australia, uh, but also to have a chat with Michael and Barbara O'Neill. And uh, I've had a bit of a look at the venue. Uh, I am not confident getting the vehicle anywhere close to it. Uh, so I'm not going to be there. However, we will still be live streaming the event. So I will host uh, my end of it, at least, from here. Um, and I will get pictures from the live event uh, in Sydney. And uh, you'll be able to see that here. And of course, uh, I will line up a time for Michael and Barbara O'Neill to come on and have a chat, uh, explain what the Heart Party is all about. And with a little bit of little bit of luck and we find out you know what sort of things Barbara can and can't talk about uh, and I think um, others have started and I'm going to jump on the bandwagon I'm not sure if Maria uh, wasn't part of this initially uh, Maria Z but um, there is apparently a movement now to make the federal government stand up and uh, uh, justify the bullshit that Barbara has to go through uh, every time she wants to hold a seminar and in fact, the charges that they say they will lay against her are significant charges. They're to do with uh, the Food and Drug Administration. And that isn't an Australia body. That's the American body, the FDA. Um, we do have a Food and Drug Administration, but I'm pretty sure it's not called that. Uh, however, she has crossed the boundaries with our regulators here somewhere along the line. Uh, I think she was accused of saying that something cured cancer, which you cannot say, even if it Maybe does. Uh, you are not allowed to say that. 
because what would happen to Big Pharma if people weren't going off to go and get chemo every week? Hmm. It's an interesting question when a, a woman is silenced over her stand of what could potentially be a, a cure for something, but Big Pharma is standing in the way. Uh, I think the government should be made to justify their decisions on her and try and explain their decisions as to why she isn't allowed to conduct business freely in this country and has to live uh, essentially out of the country if she wants to do anything. So I'm very keen to learn a bit more about that and uh, find out the true ins and outs of it. But unfortunately, because I am just so large, if it was just the bus, and even if it was the bus and the small trailer, I might be able to get in there. But uh, I've had a look. There is nowhere to park within a bull's roar of the joint. The fines, if you park a national or a nationally registered heavy vehicle in parts of Sydney that you're not meant to park nationally heavy registered vehicles in, the minimum fine is $2,500 and it can go up to $25,000. So we're not going to be risking that. Um, But we will still uh, have this launch at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning is the plan. So uh, we should be able to get good audio from there as well. Uh, And in fact... um, Uh, Mary Jane, who uh, is part of Freedom Financial Solutions uh, FFS, and uh, and another fellow who I'll uh, be having a bit of a chat with at some stage as well over the weekend, Um, and I'll introduce you to probably tomorrow. Uh, Yes, we will do a show tomorrow. Uh, Might only just be a uh, a bit of a quick live off the phone. It depends on where we are and what we're doing. I have to go to Bathurst tomorrow to uh, buy a couple of mobile phone tripods. Um, Cass, thankfully very lovely of her is lending me the the Mustang to go to Bathurst. I'll say that again. Cass is lending me her Mustang to go to Bathurst to Kmart. You know, at the end of the main street is Conrod Strait in Bathurst or Murray's Corner where you turn left to go across the start finish line. That's right at the end of the main street in Bathurst. I, I, I might have to take the Mustang for a lap around Bathurst. Just one, only one. You can only do it at 60 kilometres an hour, but I will attach the GoPro and take you for a lap of Mount Panorama if I get there tomorrow. I'm pretty sure that I will. Uh, and hopefully we have another little interesting guest that we can uh, we can throw you away. Um, uh, I guess I can show you a little bit of uh, this area. Uh, around uh, the Lake Oberon Estate in pre- preparation for tonight. Um, I just shot a little bit of video yesterday, a little bit this morning with the drone. I've just nailed a few bits and pieces together. It's uh, it's a little bit rough, but it'll give you an idea uh, of the facilities that are available here. I've got a little interview that I just did with our chef for tonight's meals. Um, I didn't have enough time to get it loaded up into the system, unfortunately, but you will see Tony. Uh, talking about the meals coming up in the not-too-distant future, but um, let's have a bit of a look. Uh, So last night we had um, uh, souvlaki, beautiful lamb. Uh, I was in charge of the fire, and that's uh, the hot coals you can see me trying to make there. This is the outdoor area, or one of the outdoor areas that are available here at Lake Oberon Estate Bar, pizza maker over there, um, and, of course, this uh, magnificent char box. Got to say, the uh, meal that I had last night cooked over that was just magnificent. That's a bit of an idea of one of the chalets, at least. There are uh, five of them here. Uh, That chalet there that's just, well, on the left, the sun. Oh, yeah, that was the sun going down last night. Beautiful, uh, beautiful sunset. Uh, And there is a lake out there, which you will get a good look at here in just a minute or two. But the chalets are spectacular. In fact, you can put up to 10 people in that. Uh, chalet Uh, and they've got five of them uh, all decked out for various things so here's a bit of a look this morning Uh, I got attacked by birds so if you see um, a few birds spinning past and popping in shot here uh, that's what's happening Uh, I got attacked by a swarm of these little they're not sparrows they're they're almost like willy wagtails except they've got bluish sort of tails Um, but uh, yeah they they like having a bit of a feast in that pond that you can see up in the top of the picture and uh, I went for a bit of a fly over the pond and 
attracted their attention. So this gives you a, an idea of uh, the facilities. That retaining wall there is nearly five metres high uh, at the corner. And this is the view you can expect when you wake up in the morning, straight over Oberon or Lake Oberon. Uh, there is a golf course uh, within uh, easy reach. And uh, if you feel the urge, you can go down into Lake Oberon and catch trout. Uh, so here is our host tonight. What are we having for dinner, uh, Tony? Lamb sivlaki, um, oh. seasoned vegetables, and Greek salad. Greek Yay. salad is a beautiful. Very beautiful. That salad it's just looks. Yeah. Just let's uh, oh, zoom out. Yeah. Amazing. That is magnificent. That is a hell of a feed, mate. I'm not going to get through all of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can tell you, I didn't get through all of that. Uh, it was a pile on, but um, magnificent meal. And uh, hello to Liz, who you saw there. Uh, Liz came out from Sydney yesterday. She's coming to the seminar tonight and uh, wanted to catch up early. So uh, we had her over for dinner. Um, it didn't quite work out the way that we'd expected. I had a meeting last night that I had with my place as well, uh, which we put back half an hour and... Uh, and then got um, sort of a little bit waylaid. But anyway, we got it sorted. Uh, g'day, Paul, right straight into Carl's live stream from Lake Oberon Resort. Are you here, Paul? Uh, are you coming to tonight's seminar? Look forward to it. Um, I think we'll have a few people who are arriving about now. Um, Ah, Rachel, what a good idea. Hang on, let me bring that one up and show people. Oh, clearly Rachel saw my uh, my short post that van life is great and all that, but, God, you drag dirt into the place. Oh, God. And because it's a big box and there's a lot of air floating around, there is always dust, always that sort of stuff. So uh, it's for, you're forever cleaning it. But um, I did mention that, yes, one of the big annoying factors is dragging shit inside uh, and, yes, I know there are certain mats you can get. Do you know how much a mat for the steps costs? Like this grassy-looking plastic thing that scrapes the crap off your boots? It's ridiculous how much money they want for that. Refuse to pay it until I get sick and tired of having to vacuum every time I walk in and out of the bus. So, um, yeah. Thanks, Rach. Good tip. Um, a pair of slip-on shoes or sandals for entry into the bus and then put your shoes on when you leave the bus. Yes, uh, Suvlaki, yeah, and I've got to say, I've seen the lamb meal lined up for tonight. Uh, there is some kind of uh, Greek fish egg something too that uh, I've got some vision of. It looks lovely. I've never tasted it, so I'm looking forward to give that a go. And, uh, and uh, lots of veggies, a Greek pasta bake that almost sounds pornographic when you say it in Greek. Um and uh, a couple of other nice veggies lined up for tonight. So the Lake Oberon Resort, or I should beg your pardon, the Lake Oberon Estate is about seven kilometres outside of Oberon. I went into town this morning to find some fuses for the bus to get the light working again, or the lights. Uh, we were successful in that endeavour and got to have a beautiful breakfast at a little uh, cafe in town and uh, met a couple of the locals, which was nice. And, uh, and then went to the local information centre. Now, if you are wondering what is Oberon famous for, because I sort of was, um, I had it geographically in a completely different place in my head uh, until I really looked up how to get here. Uh, I thought it was much further south than it is. Um, and, well, what's it known for? Well, it's, it sits at about 1,200 metres above sea level. It's fairly brisk. Uh, I'm told that the weather can be a bit like Melbourne, uh, four seasons in one day, and winter can especially be a bit brutal with the winds whipping across the lake and uh, all that. Well, I can tell you, if you've got the um, the air conditioner heater working all right, you don't feel what's going on outside. Uh, I am fully kitted up for uh, cold weather, and in fact, black sheep will be very impressed. I have the black sheep jacket that has the battery in the pocket that heats the whole jacket. It's the most amazing jacket. I've never come across a jacket like it before in my life. But um, thank you to Milwaukee and thank you to Black Sheep who donated it to me when I was in Tasmania. Uh, it's come on the trip with me. So uh, you'll no doubt see me in that with the battery-operated heater at some stage through the Victorian leg of this in the not-too-distant future. Um, yeah, thanks, Pete. Got all the lights working again. Uh, big 30-amp maxi fuse blew and didn't blow when we stuck a new one in. So that's good. 
I think what probably happened is I overloaded it playing around with my driving lights. Uh, for those of you who haven't had a really good look at the front of the bus, <coughs> I have um, I have a lot of high beam light on the front of the bus, a lot. Uh, I can see kilometres down the road. Um, however, I have absolutely the worst low beam lights you've ever seen in your life. It's like looking at the world through a sepia picture. Um, very, very unpleasant. <coughs> Trying to do something about that, but it might need to be new headlights. Uh, I've polished them as best I can on the outside and it still comes up a yellowy, browny mess. So if any of you have any ideas on how to clean up a set of headlights uh, to hopefully uh, make them work. Oh, a blue wren, was it, Wild Aussie Woman? Well, they're little buggers uh, and, <coughs> pardon me, very excitable little buggers. And there was a heap of them. Uh, I didn't hit any with the drone. They didn't hit the drone. They were just swooping it a lot and trying to get away. So uh, no animals were harmed in the making of that video. Just want to make that clear. Speaking of animals, big hello to Missy, who is the uh, the local English hound that lives here. Yep, a hunting hound. I've never seen one up close and personal. They look like a really big basset with a little head. But um, what an interesting dog. And boy, is she on the money when it comes to uh, weird things floating around. Anyway, back to Oberon. Uh, after breakfast, we did a little bit of shopping, got some lamb, went into the local IGA, um, uh, wandered around a bit, and then headed off to the local tourist information centre. Uh, I wanted to find out what sort of events over on stages through the year, because we might be able to come back and help promote a few of them. And uh, I had no idea that the Oberon area is known for the best truffles in Australia. Truffles. Did you know that? Truffles. In fact, there is a, well, quite a few growers of truffles out here, but there is a company out here that trains truffle dogs. Truffle ears are what these people are called, uh, people who are into truffles, and I guess the dogs too. Um, I have never had a truffle. I wouldn't know a truffle if I tripped over it. But uh, if I have a truffle dog with me, you're not likely to trip over it. And it's better than using the old truffle pigs, because uh, you know how the French finding truffles use pigs. Uh, the biggest problem with that is you've got to stop the pig eating the truffle. Uh, the dogs apparently have no interest, but they will find it quite happily. Not going to eat it, but they're very happy to go and find it. So i um, keen to go and learn a bit more about that because uh, that's quite a large export business that works straight out of Oberon um, and heads overseas. Uh, and this particular company, truffles are only in season. Uh, you know, you get a winter truffle and a summer truffle. Who knew I... Knew, knew so much about truffles. But you get a summer and a winter and there are varieties that will grow, well, basically at the other times of the year. And this is what Oberon has become famous at doing. They actually uh, have truffle hunts uh, where people bring their truffle dogs uh, out to the property and the, the property offers training. If you've got a dog that you want to be a truffle ear, then they can help you with that. Uh, but they now offer... Uh, the, the ability for you to go truffle hunting 10 months of the year, which is pretty spectacular in the truffle world. So uh, if you don't know much about truffle and you, like me, have come to Bathurst quite a few times in your life and never gone anywhere else, um, take the half-hour drive or so uh, on a day where there's not much track action happening or stay a day longer and uh, maybe come out to the Lake Oberon Estate, spend a night out here, enjoy a magnificent meal, and then go and check out the truffles and the truffle ears. It's just interesting that there are such things here in Australia. I didn't, I didn't even know that we grew truffles here in Australia. So, um, yeah, women truffles. Thanks, Paul. Good on you. Um, ah, uh, yes. I haven't spoken about the eclipse. Well, we're all here still. Um. I am interested, there is a lot of prophecy or a lot of prediction or whatever the hell you want to call it, um, predicting that 40 days after the eclipse they have to do their worst to us where uh, the world will be torn asunder. So 40 days. I guess we're looking to the end of May. Uh, and if we're all still alive at the end of May, well, there's another date come and gone. 
I'll talk about these dates and these events, but I'm not telling you that anything is going to happen. I'm just here to tell you what they say may or may not happen. Um, I don't invest myself in dates at all, and I hope you don't either. There is no point investing yourself in a date. We have had so many dates, particularly those of us that have been doing this for so long. We gave up on dates two years ago at least um, because they don't come through. They never have come off. We have seen other things happen on certain dates, which might, if you were able to stretch the string as taut as you possibly can, think the two are linked, but it's more supposition than proof in many cases. So I willingly accept all the information about what's going to happen. Uh, today, for instance, Donald Trump, it was announced, signed America over to the BRICS union, meaning the US dollar is dead. Uh, if America joins BRICS, the US dollar is dead. Okay, so some of you will say, well, how can Trump change the financial system of America? He's not even the president. Well, if he's the commander in chief, and this is where the ifs are, you've got to keep listening for the if word. If he is the commander in chief, then the fake president is Biden. Biden is the head of a corrupt and now bankrupt corporation. Donald Trump bankrupted the Corporation of the United States of America before he left office. All right? And you can check the paperwork. So when the election was stolen, or theoretically uh, accused to be stolen, uh, allegedly, I've got to say all those things because God knows we get kicked off whatever platform. Um, when that happened, that changed things dramatically from the people's perception. The people perceived that Biden became president. That's because the media told them that. Media declared him president three hours after polls closed, three or four hours after polls closed. Impossible to do that unless the landslide that was going to Trump all of a sudden somehow got maybe turned around to the other. Um, whether that happened or it didn't uh, is neither here nor there, I guess. The fact that the important salient matter is, and it relates to the executive orders that Donald Trump signed while in office, the salient fact is that if he is the president, uh, sorry, if he is the commander in chief, he does have the power to sign America into BRICS. Now, I've seen one story on that that popped up in my feed earlier today, very early this morning. I've been going back to it looking for other stories confirming that same sort of news. This site that it came from claims to be one of the most uh, real sites out there. Um, so, okay, we'll wait and see. I wouldn't expect the mainstream media to promote the fact that Donald Trump has signed America up to BRICS because many people will have the same logic trap that you fell into saying, well, hang on, how did he manage to do that if he's not president? Um and if you don't understand the commander-in-chief versus the president argument and the separation of those powers, then it'll be very difficult for people to understand what is actually happening. But the president-in-chief can, and we are led to believe, has been operating uh, for the last three years or so behind the scenes as the, the commander-in-chief uh, of the United States of America, not the president. And when it comes to... The military, the military obey the commander-in-chief. They do not obey the president. They do not obey the president. So if you have in one body the commander-in-chief and the president, which is usually how this happens, then you can say, oh, well, they do follow the president. But they're not. They're actually following the commander-in-chief line of authority, not the presidential line of authority. The presidential line of authority is a corporate authority only. Like being the CEO of the company. That's what the president is. The boss of the United States Corporation. That doesn't make it a government. That makes it a business. And with all the ABN numbers, including the Australian ones that are locked into it too, it's broke. Dead broke. That's why we're having such ructions in America at the moment, uh, the border, amongst other things. But there is more coming. 
Uh, and if this BRICS thing is actually true, well, how long can that be staved off if Trump really was able to sign this over to the BRICS, sign the US over to the BRICS model? That would mean the markets have to change rapidly, rapidly. There will be no hiding the fact that the US dollar is now not the global currency. No hiding that. What will Joe Biden have to say about that? How will the mainstream media try and spin that? Is Biden going to come out and say, oh, no, 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 we haven't joined BRICS. You can keep, you know, we're going to print more money for you. I don't think that's going to happen either. Gold. I sort of see somebody here, uh, Paul. Gold will rise. Um, well, uh, as near as I can understand it, and I haven't seen Paul uh, from Ainsley, who will be here tonight. Uh, I think he's on uh, the drive out from Sydney as we speak. Uh, I'm just having a little bit of a glance here at the spot price. So uh, $3,680 an ounce for gold. $3,680.52 to be precise. Now, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, um, well, if you bought an ounce of gold two or three weeks ago, you have made over $300 profit on that ounce today. Is your bank going to give you that kind of result? Seriously? Is your superannuation company going to give you that kind of result? They're never going to be able to deliver that sort of a return. That is phenomenal growth. And there is uh, not what you'd call great signs of it slowing down. Um, we all know we're looking for precious metals to bounce. Well, they are softly at the moment. Gold is a little more volatile. Silver, on the other hand, sitting at $44.73 at the spot price. Um, that's up, I think, uh, at, least, at least $2 from last time I looked uh, a couple of days ago or a week ago. So uh, things are on the move. If you've got silver, uh, you're making two or three dollars. Well, depending on what price you bought it for. If you bought it at twenty six, then hey, look, you're doing all right. You've made nearly nineteen dollars an ounce profit. Uh, that's a good way of making money. Would your bank or your superannuation fund have been able to do that for you? No, absolutely not. So, if you do have super in big super, I can't recommend to you highly enough that you organise yourself to have a chat with Cass and the team from Freedom Financial Solutions, and they can get your superannuation in your hands in a very short time period. Uh, we're talking as little as maybe a couple of weeks. Uh, it's that easy. And they will give you the advice on how to do it. Of course, uh, we would recommend to you, Ainsley, if you're going to invest your super into gold and silver. Uh, I trust the team at Ainsley. Uh, I know them. I've worked with them pretty closely now for probably, I don't know, nearly a year. And uh, they are wonderful, wonderful people who are into this movement, who care about us and who care about the future uh, of your money and your wealth. And they're into protecting it and showing you the best ways of how you can protect your own wealth. And maybe even make yourself a little more on the side on the way up. So this is what the seminar tonight is about. And we've got, uh, I think, about 50 or 60 interested folks who are turning up tonight uh, to hear more about that. And, of course, uh, Cass will enlighten them on the uh, SMSF side. And uh, Paul is, uh, well, I'm going to nail Paul down for a bit of a chat at some stage. I hope we're going to have a bit of a talk about the market and what it's doing, and I'll try and bring that to you tomorrow. So that's all coming. Uh, I'm heading to Canberra uh, when I leave here. I will spend maybe one or two days in Canberra, and then I'll be heading to Victoria. Uh, lining up for our uh, week's worth of seminars going down through Victoria. Uh, we're starting in Ballarat on the 23rd, Horsham on the 24th, Cobram on the 26th of April, 27th will be in Albury Wodonga, and the 28th we are in Wangaratta. So if you're in those areas and you want to catch up, let us know. Um, very happy. I'm, I'm determined to catch up with a few old friends in Wangaratta. We will try and have lunch, I hope. Uh, on the 28th. So um, if you're interested in and you're in that area and you want to catch up for a bit of a chat, then uh, I used to work at 3&E uh, many, many, many years ago. And there's a few people still in the uh, Wang area uh, who actually remember me. Um, and they had their 70th anniversary uh, only a couple of weeks ago. 
well, coming up on a month ago now, I suppose. So um, I was unable to get down there for that, but I will pop into town and uh, and catch up with those who who want to, and that includes you guys. If you happen to be in the Wangaratta area, or, or if you're in the Cobram, Yarrawonga, um, Albury, Wodonga area, love to catch up. In Horsham, uh, I'm actually, <coughs> pardon me, I'm going to arrive pretty early in Horsham. Uh, one of my uh, dearest and oldest friends uh, is an ex-nil boy, and uh, unfortunately no longer with us. He's passed away. Um and uh, I'm catching up with his son, so I'm really looking forward to doing that, and we're going to go out and have a look at my mate's uh, final resting place. Um, so we'll do that on the uh, first day I'll get to Horsham. We'll have our seminar then, uh, I think, that night. And then Anzac Day, we've got a bit of a drive ahead of us, and I think it'll be Cass's first experience in the bus. So I'll be interested to hear what she has to say about it once we get six hours down the road because that's about how long it's going to take us on uh, Anzac Day to get where we've got to go. So um, it will be interesting. Uh, I've advised her to bring a set of headphones that uh, are noise cancelling and she can listen to her podcast. Otherwise, the noise of the radio uh, or the PA in the bus is just adds to the cacophony of sound that comes from the motor. Uh, and the motor, well, as we all know, she's a big motor. And there are a lot of hills between me and wherever we're going. So uh, we're going to be using that big roaring motor again. Uh, we, are in the, we are in the looking phase to maybe potentially look at swapping the motor out uh, of the vehicle. Um, I was under the impression that could be a job that would be running us to fifty dollars or $60,000. But I'm reliably informed that won't be the case. Uh, we don't need to go and buy a new engine. We just need to buy a good second-hand engine. And there are plenty of those around uh, and plenty of good people like yourselves who will help us fit it. Um, this will create a huge economy uh, for the uh, for the vehicle. It will be much more economical than what it's doing running on petrol and will enable us to have uh, better torque, better everything. Uh, being a big vehicle, hauling big stuff, uh, it would be useful, very useful. So... Uh, that will materialise sometime over the next 12 months or so. Uh, we're not rushing toward it, but it is something that's in the back of our mind because uh, this V10 petrol motor is a brilliant motor. I mean, I love it. I really love it, but I want it in a hot rod. <laughs> so uh, Peter Grace might be in the market to sell a, I think it's a 457 um, Ford motor, V10. Just saying, might be in the market to sell one of those. She's a he, wonderful motor. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the motor. Um, and uh, I'm very, very uh, impressed with just the power that I've got in it. But I have recently driven a bus that has a diesel motor in it. And, um, yeah, side by side, although the other bus was a bit younger than this one, uh, side by side there really wasn't a comparison, I'll be honest. Um you do a lot more revving in petrol than you do uh, with diesel. I think it's probably the best way to do that. Uh, Cass has not got sandals tonight, Rachel. Um, in fact, Cass has got a cold and a flu and, a yeah, she's uh, got a dreaded lurgy on her chest. Uh, she was in a meeting last night with me and she was coughing up pretty bad. So uh, uh, I know that she's having a rest at the moment. Um, and Mary Jane is the same from Freedom Financial Solutions. Uh, they went and did a big detox thing about a week ago and they believe that this is the detox happening. They're just getting all this crap out of their systems and it's coming out, making them feel quite ill. But at any rate, they've uh, they've turned up tonight um, fighting, well, fighting fit-ish and uh, they'll deliver the show like the ultimate professionals that they are. But um, uh, there are, well... Be watching tomorrow, folks. There's going to be a few interesting little pop-ups tomorrow. We'll have a, a couple of interesting little chats. I have to go and put some clothes on. Um, I'm going to dress myself up rather than have my rugby top on. Uh, I'll go and grab the suit and uh, we'll do that. Zippy, yeah, Cass has been loading up on vitamin D. Uh, and, in fact, when the girls arrived this afternoon, the sun was out on the deck out there. It was absolutely beautiful. So they just cast themselves down into the uh, pure vitamin D coming from the good Lord's sun 
and um, or whoever else created it, and uh, relaxed until the clouds turned up, and then it got very chilly very quickly. So they headed off into bed. Uh, both of them will be up and ready in the next 10 minutes or so, I would imagine, and uh, I've got to be down there by 6 o'clock to uh, greet folks and say hello. So um, some of you are probably sitting in the car park watching this right now. If you are, I'll see you soon. Um, thanks for uh, popping in tonight. Be around tomorrow. We will uh, be doing a little live stream there. I might uh, introduce another guest to you who's here for us uh, over the weekend, and uh, we'll have a bit of a chat with him. And uh, there'll be a couple of other interesting bits and pieces going on here tomorrow as well. Uh, I'll endeavour to show you a bit more of the kitcheneering that uh, our host, Tony Alvarez, has been um, uh, responsible for. And uh, I can't urge you strongly enough, if you have a family group, you're looking for a getaway. Uh, this is just such an ideal spot. Um, you can bring 10 people and all stay in the same chalet. Beautiful kitchen, magnificent bathrooms in every chalet, magnificent kitchens. The places have been decked out top-notch. This is real five-star, beautiful, beautiful accommodation. But you don't necessarily pay five-star prices. Um, and uh, and I'm sure if you mention Voice of Freedom, Tony might do you a bit of a deal. Uh, he and Julia, lovely, lovely people. So uh, by all means, if you... Want to get a family retreat happening, you need a weekend away, you've got a work thing and you want to get people out of the city and into a relaxing environment. There is a golf course, like I say, not far away, uh, a whole uh, centre here where you can uh, conduct your meetings, all the audio, all the visual stuff is there. Um, you can have everything catered for you here on site and then you can go truffle hunting in your off time if you so desire, amongst many other things that you can do here. It really is a spectacular. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting the level of brilliance that the Lake Oberon Estate is delivering. Uh, and the family that runs it and built this uh, from scratch, they started with by building a little uh, a cottage that they lived in further up the hill and, uh, and then expanded from there. Uh, and, in fact, where the site that... Uh, everything is on, used to be a, a part of a rock quarry or a big hole in the ground where they were digging road base out. Um, well, it looked like a bit of an eyesore, so Tony filled all that in and then just kept on going and has built some of the most magnificent chalets I've ever come across. In fact, Cass is really impressed too, and this is an area that she's looking into in a great many ways. Um, oh, now, Katoomba, uh, not Katoomba, God, look at me. Um I want to uh, talk about Jim Boomba. Uh, my place in Jim Boomba are having a event tonight. Now it's happening at a hall along the Mount Lindsay Highway. The name of the hall escapes me, but if you drop onto the myplace.org uh, page and bring up Jim Boomba, you will get all the details there. You can also find it inside the uh, Unity Hub. Uh, Jim Boomba is one of the uh, one of the more uh, kick-ass my places at the moment. They're uh, really powering ahead with speakers. And there'll be a speaker there tonight uh, who is uh, going to speak on what I think, um, if I've got it, if I'm thinking this is the right technology, it's cement house building, but it's done in a way you wouldn't believe. You inflate a mould and then you pour cement over that mould, deflate the mould and you have a house. It's wild. If that's... The kind of thing they're talking about tonight. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, but there are so many different varieties of property that you can build uh, to live in on your property. Um, from a dome, from a tent to a dome, um, to a five-star chalet. And uh, some of the more interesting ones are these inflation uh, domes, they're called, uh, where they literally can be moulded into the ground that they're going into like you can dig them into the wall of, of a hill uh inflate them pressurize them cement them walk away um amazing amazing technology so uh, i'd like to go and find someone who's actually done that and um, be really keen to see how well it turns up uh all right folks i'm gonna have to run because uh as like i say i've got to go and get the suit on it's been a while i've got to remember how to tie up a tie 
and uh, make myself look beautified. Oh, shit, I better have a shower. So uh, I better run. Uh, thank you very much, folks, for uh, popping in tonight. Um, we will have another chat tomorrow, and I dare say our chat tomorrow will have, well, there'll be a lot of input from you, I'm sure. Uh, and we might even do a and a with the guy I'm going to be talking to. Uh, you can ask us anything you like, and we'll make up all the answers that you want to hear. Um, most of them will be true to the best of our ability. I say most because I can't speak for him. I don't know. Everything I tell you will be true. But I don't know about him. Some of them are a bit weird. If you're out on the roads, folks, stay clear of those dickheads. Huh? You let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. That's why we're going back. Does anybody else want to stay? Let's rock!